Hey everyone, welcome back to the show. Also, how many of you have a poor relationship with sugar? I think we all do to some degree. I mean, sugar can, oh, it can be as addictive as cocaine. That's actually what they've shown in the brain that it can be as addictive as cocaine. So sugar can be your, cr your crutch when it comes to actually losing the weight. Well, what if you could put a little spice into your life and it could help with your sugar addiction. Well, when I saw this girl's website ad, so I worked with this girl back in the summer in 2019 um, and for her summit, her weight loss summit. And when I checked out her website, I knew I had to have her on my show because her website is called masalabody.com. <clears throat> Najina Abdullah is a health coach for busy women and founder of the website, masalabody.com. She teaches women how to eat delicious food and lose weight without counting calories or feeling deprived. Najina has been featured in Business Insider, People.com, Huffington Post, and on Fox News. Najina is going to share with us her secrets to adding spice into your life to help us overcome the sugar addiction. So welcome, Najina. Thank you so much. I'm so excited to be here. Now, did I say your last name right? Well, so my last name, you said my last name right, Abdullah, and my first name is Nagina. N -A oh, Nagina, yes. So I, got the, I got half of it right, but usually it's the other way around. I'm so yeah, sorry. It's very common, so it's totally fine. It's totally fine. All right, Nagina. Well, I, like I said, I love the name of your website. Um, Masala is one of my favorite spices. So for those of you that don't know what masala is, it's an Indian spice and it's fantastic. I use it all the time in cooking. And I totally agree with everything you say about how spice can just, it can be the ticket to just feeling like you're getting satisfaction out of the food you eat when there's no sugar in it. Yep, exactly. Yes. It, feels, <laughs> it really actually binds with receptors in your brain that makes you feel like you are full or insatiated, just like sugar does. That's good. That's where Amazing. Sugar, like, sugar, like sometimes your receptors, it, you're needing that sugar fix. Well, you can often get your sugar fix with spices. Some of them are actually sweet. And then also some of them, um, they, they bind with your receptors and you feel just satiated. Oh, wow. And I, I let's, okay, let's back up. Nagina, you, like, when I saw your website for the first time and I saw your beautiful pictures, you looked like you had this, you came by it naturally, this gorgeous body in your bikini, on your Instagram, and then you read your story. And no, like, you were 40 pounds overweight. So tell us kind of where the world that you came from and what was happening to your body and what kind of brought you here today. Oh yes, absolutely. It didn't, it didn't come easy to me until no. I found the solution that actually did feel easy, but it took many, many, many years of hard work and just trying everything to get there. Uh, but my story is that I struggled with my weight for my entire life. I mean, I thought about it every morning. It was something that I focused on all of the, all the time because it's something I couldn't crack. Like I would eat a cookie and I would gain a pound. That's my mm -hmm. metabolism seemed like it was so slow. Uh, I had to watch it all the time and I had to make sure that I was exercising. I was literally, I knew the, ca the calorie counts for every single kind of food because um, I was studying them and I was reading all the magazines and understanding, trying to learn how to lose weight and feel good in my body. Um, and so after trying every single diet out there, like Weight Watchers, um, Nutrisystem, Paleo, and then just trying to eat less and exercise more, I found that I would actually, I would lose weight, like maybe I would lose 10 pounds or so, but I, the minute I would lose it, I would just eat everything I was deprived of during that time, mm -hmm. and I would put the weight back on. Mm -hmm. And, and so I kept going through this yo-yo cycling of losing and putting more back on. Uh, and when I was in my thirties, I started working at a very demanding, um, in a demanding career as a management consultant, which was my dream job. I was working in New York city and I was traveling, jumping on planes and trains and doing so many things with a 70 plus hour work week schedule. I was working a lot and, um, and it was even harder. Like I didn't even have the time to think about 
what I was eating or exercising. And shortly after that, I had my first child and then my second. And so I was now at a place where I had extra weight because of my pregnancies and because of this demanding career, but yet I had always struggled with my weight. And so I was really at the maximum place and I felt overwhelmed and I felt like I didn't know if this weight would ever come off. And I was actually really scared because it was hard living in my body at that time. It was, mm -hmm. I, I was very, uh, I was overweight. I could not fit into any of my clothes. My back had actual like true physical back pain because I was carrying all of this extra weight around um, and I couldn't fit into any of my clothes and I didn't want to go buy a whole new wardrobe of really nice clothes. Mm -hmm. And that's where I realized I needed to do something to change my trajectory and it had to be different than what I'd done before because that hadn't worked. Uh, and so I started reading lots of kind of cutting edge information and I learned that all the the, the weight loss advice that's available to us, like from magazines and from mainstream channels is so incorrect. I'd basically been learning how to be on a diet for the rest of my life. Yeah. And I didn't have to be like that. And so what I started to do was I started to make some, some actual significant changes in the types of foods I ate. And I started lowering my sugar and I started learning what foods break down to sugar really quickly because when we have sugar in our bodies, we crave more sugar. And so I really wanted to clear my body of sugar. And I, it was very important to me to make this process fun because I knew that I would be able to follow it for a long time instead of losing the weight and then putting it right back on. Mm -hmm. And the way that I added fun was that I wanted to experiment more with spices because spices add flavor without the calories. And as I learned quickly after, they also give you a weight loss boost. Like they increase your metabolism, they curb your appetite, they lower your blood sugar. There were so many weight loss benefits. And it was making it kind of fun to experiment with my food to get these benefits and to also have it taste good. And as a result of eating like this, that was different than anything I'd done before. I act, I can't believe it. To this day, I lost forty pounds in nine months wow. doing that. Yeah, uh, and amazing. The whole, thank you. And the whole time I was doing it, I felt like I was living in this uh, secret world because I would come home and eat the most delicious gourmet tasting meals that were so easy to make because all I did was sprinkle spices on them. Uh, and my husband and I would sit down for dinner, and we would both look at each other and say, "This is too good to be healthy." Because usually the way that we think of the stereotypical way of looking at healthy food is that it doesn't taste that good, but actually it tasted so delicious. And then I started feeling great. I dropped 10 pounds in my first month after feeling like I was eating at a, at a gourmet restaurant every night. And, and then that's how I was able to keep going. And then because of that boost, I think that also helped me help to accelerate the process. And it's been eight years and I've kept the wow. weight up and just gotten more toned since then because it became a lifestyle. And that's really what I was looking for. Amazing. I mean, how many millions of women out there right now have that headspace that you did? Like yeah, almost all of them, like 90% of women think that by counting calories, counting their carbs, things like that are, is the answer. The exercise is the answer that you have to suffer and you have to use willpower. And if you want to be thin, I remember thinking this in my head back then too, which was if I'm not suffering, I will not keep the weight off. Like I just, I, I had that in my head. Like I had to suck it up and I had to suffer in order to be thin, which is just so backwards. But yet, like I said, I think 90, 95% of women still believe that to this day. Oh, that is so true that they, so many women do feel like that. And I mean, so after I lost this weight, what happened is that I started, a lot of women started asking me about how I did it. And that's how I started my website. And I started coaching other women to lose weight um, who are also very busy women. But one of the biggest things I hear is it's so easy. It feels so easy to lose this weight and it can feel easy especially once you start eating more of the foods that are good for your body and that your body's responding to. And as a result, you don't have to feel hungry or that you're trying so hard. And then it makes you crave sugar and other unhealthy foods less when you're eating more of the right foods. So my mantra is really about eating more and 
never feeling deprived. In fact, it's really against my whole entire method is if you feel hungry, it's not the right thing because you can't stay hungry. Like you can't no. keep this up if you're, if you're feeling hungry, yeah. but there are foods that, that they digest very slowly and they keep you at a very um, neutral energy level. So you're not going up and down all day. You're just feeling good all day long and you're feeling at like balanced energy levels. And as a result, you lose weight and you feel so amazing that you want to keep doing it. And so it yeah. becomes a lifestyle and that's really that key that kind of like golden thing that we're looking for and it, it does exist when you start looking into changing your habits and changing the kinds of foods that you're eating and it doesn't have to be drastic it's just sometimes minor shifts but eating more of the good foods okay so let's talk about the de little more detail then as far as like what kind of foods are we talking about what are the ones that have these hidden sugars that maybe we're not quite aware of um, just, you know, re a recommendation. What does your diet look like? You know, breakfast, lunch kind of thing. Give us some sa sample menu ideas. Yes, absolutely. So, I mean, a lot of times, like the, the thing about that I talk about, about low, lower sugar, you know, none of us are really eating cake for lunch usually, um, unless there's a birthday or unless you just feel like, you know, doing it, but it's not necessarily even only from sweets. So it's really about learning those foods where sugar is hiding. Um, and so there's several, um, several foods where sugar is hiding that, that, you know, I definitely want to call out because once you're aware of it, you, you can have an alternative. Um, and so some of them are actually really healthy foods. And so, um, so like, for example, some of the foods that seem, um, that seem healthy, that have sugar in it are like, if you're having regular bread, like a regular piece of bread, when you eat that, that piece of bread, it definitely tastes good. Uh, at least to me it does. And, but it breaks down very quickly and it turns into glucose. And that's because it's a simple carbohydrate. Now, if you eat a, if you eat bread, that's high fiber, or you eat bread that's called, a, there's a bread called Ezekiel bread, which is a sprouted grain bread. You find it in the freezer section. Um, that has more fiber in it. And, and when you have something that has more fiber, it doesn't break down as quickly releasing the sugars. And so that way you don't have, you don't have sugar in your bloodstream that it, basically what's happening is it's going to be stored as fat unless you go work it off. Um, and so really knowing the kinds of breads to eat. So Ezekiel bread or high fiber bread is really key to really have a lower sugar level just to, just to begin with. That's one thing. Um, the other thing is a lot of times, a lot of, uh, another food is a lot of times we feel like salads are really healthy and they are, um, but you want to make sure that they're filling when you're eating a salad. So yeah. if you're eating a salad and it's mainly lettuce, you're definitely not going to feel healthy. Um, you're not going to feel full. But, and you're going to start craving other foods. But when you add vegetables, like, like good vegetables that keep you full, like cucumbers and broccoli and asparagus, you add those things. And then you also add, um, you, uh, you add some healthy fats like walnuts or half an avocado and then some protein, like whether it's, whether it's shredded chicken or, um, something like that, or eggs or tofu or, or salmon, whatever it may be, you are getting your protein and then it's feeling really, really full. Then you're feeling really full. But when you add dressing, dressing, a lot of the dressing that you purchase it has a ton of sugar in it. And it also has a lot of salt in it. And so you're making this great salad that's doing such good for your body. You're literally just pouring sugar on it. And, and, so, and so that's why I advise, like definitely either make your own dressing and have that at home so that you control the amount of oil. You know that there's no sugar in it because a lot of the dressings have sugar to make it sweeter because it tastes better like that. Yeah. Um, but if you want to have dressing on your salad and you're out, one of the, one of a, a good option to do is to use balsamic vinegar because, um, balsamic vinegar doesn't have sugar in it and it tastes really nice. The other thing you can do is use salsa and that's a really great low sugar, um, low sugar dressing just to bring everything together. And the other thing you can do is go to a chopped salad place and they can chop up avocado and chop up bell peppers and they actually become creamy. Um, when you when you chop it up like that, and so you don't even need a dressing. Um, so so that's that's another kind of key area, and I'll I'll share one more. This is kind of a myth of a healthy food, but actually sugar hides in this in this, and that's this is a snack that many many people may go to as a healthy option. But this is dried fruit. 
So oh, yes, so high in sugar. Oh so my gosh. High in sugar, and so many people are looking at it as a healthy option. And this is really where um, what's healthy is different than what's good for weight loss. Mm -hmm. And it's important to understand that depending on your goals. And so if your goal is to maintain your weight or just to feel and be healthier, dried fruit is fine. But fruit is, is when it's dried, it's dried at its height of sugar. So it's extremely sweet when it's dried. And when you're eating it, you're not even getting the fiber from the fruit because it's just been pressed out and you only have the sweetness. So you're eating the sweet, the, this dry, uh, dried fruit and it's literally just elevating your blood sugar and you're having more fat storage as a result. Uh, and so, you know, I really recommend not really going for dried fruit, but if you're going to have dried fruit, have it as part of like a nut mix so that you are digesting that slower because nuts will cause you to, to digest anything that you're eating with it a little bit more slowly. And so sugar won't be released so fast and it'll be much better for your overall energy, your weight, et cetera. Um, and, and then if, as a total alternative, it's really having like one or two tablespoons of nuts or some seeds or peanut butter or things like that um, as an alternative to, to the quick dried fruit, which is, which is full of sugar. So, yeah. so those, are, those are a few kind of examples of things that have sugar and replacements for it. Um, you know, and I can walk you through a few more things in my day also, but let me just take a, take a pause for a moment. <laughs> no, that's great because I'm just thinking of the kind of salads that you get in a lot of restaurants and how, because they're trying to make them really palatable, it's like, you know, the candied pecans with cranberries, you know, and they're dressing the dressing that's full of sugar and canola oil and all of these other inflammatory foods. And now our, our healthy salad is no longer healthy, yes. but you can make delicious salads, like you said, that are full of all of those things. And I mean, not full of the bad stuff, but full of great things like the asparagus and the broccoli and things like that, that taste and, and fresh strawberries and stuff like that. That's so good. And it tastes, you know, it, it, it's still palatable and it's not full of all the bad stuff, all the sugars. <laughs> yes. Yes. So true. And one other thing you could do is you could have your dressing on the side and then you could control how much you're pouring in if you're at a restaurant. Um, but if there's any of those things that look like sugar in your, look like they're really sugary in your salad, you don't have to have them. You can always like just have them, like take them off or you can eat them in, in smaller quantities. But yes, the candied pecans, candied walnuts, those kinds of things. Um, it's much better if they really are, you'll taste the sweetness in it. They have a lot of sugar in them. And, and so if you can get the regular kind, it's going to be better if, you, if you're looking to maintain your energy and just to keep your weight, just to maintain your weight. Mm -hmm. Well, and speaking of spices, like I have great recipes for toasting nuts with like cayenne pepper or cinnamon. Mm -hmm. Like you can make your own really tasty nut that doesn't have to have sugar on it, right? Yeah. Yes. yes, absolutely. You can make your own mixed nuts with, with flavors and with spices on it. And in fact, I have a recipe called mixed masala nuts, which, yeah. um, which is really, really great because it's kind of makes it fun and exciting to have like a, to have nuts as a, as a, um, as a, a snack, when you put spices like yeah, cayenne pepper, cumin, paprika, salt, pepper, it just makes it, it brings it out and it tastes so good. Mm -hmm. So let's talk about the spice aspect then, because that's, I, to me, that's so fascinating of what it's doing to our brain. So how can we bring in spices and what are the best kind of spices that are for weight loss? Yes. So this is so amazing. I never really realized how many benefits spices have for weight loss. But when I lost the 40 pounds, um, I, I just had to start studying what happened because it, like I had described before, nothing had worked for me in the past. And this just started working so quickly. And I knew it was a lot of it was the low sugar foods. It was also adding more protein to my diet that really just like jumpstarted my metabolism. But the spices, definitely, I just wanted to, to learn more about them. And I found out there's a tremendous amount of weight loss benefits that spices have um, that are all natural. And, the, and a myth about spices is that they're spicy, but actually there's hardly any spices that are actually spicy. Like most spices are neutral in taste and they just have flavor. Like for example, garlic and ginger and coriander and cumin, those are all neutral spices that are just flavorful. And so you're adding that to your dish, but those also have weight loss properties. So um, one of the spices I recommend getting started with is something that's so common that it's most likely in your kitchen cupboard right now. Um, and that is a sweet spice, which is cinnamon. Mm -hmm. 
Uh, and cinnamon is super fun to get started with because um, it's sweet. And so, you know, you get that sweetness. A lot of us love having, we have a, like, we, we may have a, a sugar tooth or you may just love sugar. And so you're getting that sweetness, but you're not spiking your insulin like sugar does. Um, and uh, the thing about cinnamon is, you know, and all the spices that, that, that I talk about are, they were used by our ancestors. And so like uh, spice, like cinnamon was actually given um, as a gift to a Roman God, to Apollo, um, as a gift of, uh, of just wealth and of generosity. And so uh, this has been this has been brought to us for, for over thousands of years and you know that it's something that is working there's some reason that this has been passed down you know if it's if it's happened for thousands of years um, and so cinnamon the benefit of cinnamon is that it lowers your blood sugar and so as a result you're not getting those sugar highs and those sugar crashes and what those do, those sugar highs and sugar crashes, you get that when you eat sugar. Well, what cinnamon does is it just helps keep your, it stabilizes your blood sugar. So you're not having these ups and downs all day. You're feeling a very, very nice level of energy. And, um, and you're also not storing fat from, from sugar that, that, that you have in your blood. So, um, so cinnamon is really helping you stabilize your blood sugar. And it's also giving you a little bit of that sweet taste that you might look for from sugar. And um, so it's a great alternative. Um, just quickly, because that's so funny, because this morning my breakfast was a bulletproof coffee with cinnamon on it. And then my son, he thought he was getting away with something because he was like, mom, could I have some cinnamon toast this morning? So I made him a piece of gluten-free toast. I put butter on it and I put cinnamon. Like when I was a kid, it was loaded with cinnamon and brown sugar. When well, we had cinnamon toast, but my son with just cinnamon thinks that he is getting something special. And like, he's, he's like pulling one over on mom. Have a little cinnamon toast this morning, mom. <laughs> it's five, right? I'm like, mm, okay. <laughs> you know, like, <laughs> Okay, fine. But, uh, and then, you know, like there's so many, it's just, it's so good. That's such a great taste that he has and he doesn't even need the brown sugar. Oh, that's so good. I know. Okay. So what's, what's another one? Okay. Yeah. So, well, let me just really just, um, share uh, quickly share how you can use cinnamon. Like, yes. Cinnamon toast is actually great. Um, <laughs> That sounds good. Uh, you can use cinnamon quickly. I mean, very quickly in your in your coffee or in your tea, just like you did. Um, or you can use it in a, in a smoothie that you may be having. And that's yeah. really all you have to do is sprinkle it in there. And if you're using sugar in your coffee or tea, you're going to notice you don't need as much sugar. So you can actually take the sugar down as you're adding cinnamon. And over time, you can do what I did, which is I used to use three Splendas um, in my coffee, along with sweetener that was not unsweetened. And now today I've come to this place where I have my coffee black with cinnamon and it was a journey to get here, but it was taking like small steps and just kind of swapping the sugar out. So having a little bit less sugar, a little more cinnamon. And over time I didn't need any sugar anymore at all. So yes. So, um, so that is cinnamon. Okay. The, another spice that I'd love to share is called turmeric. And you've probably heard of it. Um, turmeric is a wonder spice because it's also been used by our ancestors for years, um, actually for 4,500 years. Um, and a lot of it has been used in Ayurvedic medicine, in Chinese medicine, and in South Asian medicine. Um, and it's been used as nature's inflammation buster. So it's actually a natural medicine and it, it, you, it's, it's a kind of a natural ibuprofen without any of the side effects that you get from modern medicine. Um, and so turmeric, it's, it's anti-inflammatory, like I shared, so anti-inflammatory that many doctors prescribe using turmeric. Um, it's, it can be for, found in also a, for, a, a pill, pill um, supplement, like a pill or a supplement form. Um, but when you use it in your cooking, it's really, it's really easy to be able to, like once you learn how to use it, it's very simple to get it in there like that. Um, and so the other benefit though that I also want to mention about turmeric is that it has been used um, and it's been shown in many, many studies that it actually blocks new fat from forming, new fat cells from forming Crazy. when you're having turmeric. And so, so that's amazing. And the, another benefit is that it actually improves your memory. And so, um, so there's really a lot of benefits like inside and out, you know, all types of benefits. And so uh, um, turmeric is, can be used really like if you have 
um, arthritis or you have joint pain, it's really perfect for anti-inflammation in that way. But also if you don't have any joint issues and you're looking to lose weight or just feel better and look better, it decreases the inflammation in your face that sometimes is like a puffiness. Like sometimes you may say, oh, my face is getting puffy. Well, it might be because it's inflamed um, and it's inflamed because of um, the, some of the foods that you're eating most likely. And so when you can like give this natural anti-inflammation, your face get, gets back to its natural shape. And also it helps with your belly inflammation, often that we feel it as a belly bloat. And so if you're feeling bloating in your stomach, it may also, you may have, you may, I mean, you may actually look really want to lose weight, but then you also most likely are having some inflammation, which is the first step to get down so that then you can work on weight, uh, on weight loss after that. Um, so those are, those are really some benefits of, of turmeric. And then the other, the ways to use turmeric. So this is really probably the biggest question because a lot of, uh, there's a lot of kind of questions around how to use turmeric. Um, and turmeric is really great to use. One of the best ways to start with it is to use it if you eat eggs, to use it in the morning in your eggs um, because it's yellow. It's the same color as eggs. You use a half teaspoon with two eggs and you won't even really taste it because turmeric, it doesn't have too much of a taste. It's a very earthy flavor. Um, you taste it a little bit, like if you were to combine it in water, but in your eggs, you're really not gonna taste it that much and you're getting that anti-inflammation right in the morning and it feels so great. Um, you can also sprinkle it on your vegetables or you can add a, tea, uh, a, one, a half teaspoon into a protein shake. Like if you go to work out, you come back, you have a protein shake because um, you just add the half teaspoon because it's helping you for recovery. It's helping you post-workout recover and relax your muscles. And it's a perfect time to have it. So yeah. those are kind of a couple different options. Oh, I, I like all, all of these things. I just made a Moroccan dish the other night that had cinnamon um, in the chicken sauce and, tum and, and turmeric and cumin. It had all of the spices. I really think that the international re recipes are far better at including these spices than we are in North America. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. yeah. I know it's, and it's really just learning it, but it's, it's, it's very simple to do it, but there's a lot of ethnic recipes that have more spices. Yes. Yeah. So if you're looking to invite more spice into your life, I definitely recommend, you know, when it comes to recipes, Googling the more ethnic type recipes, Indian, Moroccan, Mexican, they all have these spices that she's talking about here today as yeah. a staple in their recipes, really, which is great. So we have Christmas coming up right around the corner at the time of this recording. So you can see her lovely Christmas tree in the background there, uh, which is a time when we tend to go off rails when it comes to the sugar, right? Any, any recommendations? Should we just start throwing in some spice into our Christmas holidays? <laughs> <laughs> well, so, I mean, actually using cinnamon is a great spice to use during the holidays. I mean, it's so perfect. You can, you know, you can sprinkle that in any other way. You can also use um, herbs like mint and rosemary, which also have benefits um, for, for health and for weight loss. And they just, they're, they're, they're beautiful for the holidays. And so, um, so that's really great. I mean, I love you know, if you, if you're eating anything with pumpkin, um, that is a great way to use a lot of these spices because pumpkin pie spice, like that's one way you can use it, but you could actually create your own pumpkin pie spice. And it's really just a blend like of different, there's different recipes for it, but it's really like cloves, um, all spice. It could be some, some ground ginger. Um, you know, there, there's a few other things that you can add in there, but you can actually make your own spice blend and make a pumpkin soup. Like a pumpkin Yum. soup is delicious with all of these spices. Mm -hmm. um, you can also do like a butternut squash soup. That really tastes good with like cumin and all, some of the other spices that we've talked about. But really getting started in the holidays, it's like cinnamon is great. Even, you know, having a candle with cinnamon, it like makes you feel like you're in the festive mood. Um, and then you can even add it into things like, like I said, your coffee, even if you're having hot chocolate, just adding the cinnamon element to it, you are lowering your blood sugar. Um, it's not, you know, going to completely make up for the hot chocolate or for the, for the, you know, the pie or anything that you eat. But when you sprinkle it on, it's giving you a little bit of positive boost to, to, to being healthier. Yeah. And there's, you can always cut back on the amount of sugar you're using in baking 
and add in more spices. I find that that helps a lot when I do that. Like if you're making a pumpkin pie or something, like you can put less sugar and more of the spice in there. We didn't even get into ginger. I think ginger is like a wonder herb. Personally. Oh, yes, 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 yeah. absolutely. Well, ginger is so great for digestion. I mean, it helps your food pass through your body so nicely. And like this may be kind of like a like a grandma's tale or old wives tale that to have ginger tea. But actually, when you have ginger after your meal in the form of a tea, even or any other form, it really does help digest your, um, you know, it helps digest everything. So that's a really great way. And sometimes you can just put it into your smoothie, um, which a little bit, it actually, you get that. But the, one of the best ways to use ginger is if you are making beans or lentils or chili, um, ginger actually cuts the gas from lentils and beans. Oh, wow. And so some, sometimes people complain about having gas when they're eating lentils and beans. But if you use ginger, you chop it up and you add it, um, then you are actually, and you also soak the beans or lentils for four hours, then you're not going to have that, that gassy feeling because everything's being removed by, mm -hmm. by those methods. I find it really helps with migraines. Like I make a, a ginger kombucha that I actually juice the ginger. So it's super strong with ginger juice in it mm -hmm. and I can drink it and it'll take down the inflammation in my neck and bring down my headache or migraine that I'm getting almost every time. It helps immensely. And same thing, I use it for for a digestive aid, if I've eaten something that's not agreeing with me, I just grate some ginger, put some hot water, maybe a mint tea bag in it, and I find it works so well, like better than Tums. Oh wow! Yes, <laughs> yeah. absolutely. Oh my gosh! <laughs> yeah, that's my favorite. And then my other favorite, I would have to say, like with all of these spices and just getting rid of the cravings for something sweet or something sugary, is mixing it with coconut milk. Like any sort of a dish with coconut milk and those spices, I feel like you're, it's like dessert. It's so rich and yet there's no sugar in it. Yes. Very little. Yes. Absolutely. I mean, the, the thing about spices and like how it really works well with a, with a, with a way of eating that is lower sugar or a generally healthy, healthy diet is that it's a way to give yourself indulgences yes. as you're on the journey to get healthier because so many, so many things about losing weight are about depriving yourself and about eating less and having to just like bear the pain so that you can get the results of a thinner waist. And it really, it really, it is not, it does not have to be like that. And so when you're giving yourself spices, um, you, you just get to add this, this level of indulgence and of treating yourself so well through that method. And um, like one of the kind of examples is maybe I, if I can describe my morning routine, I yeah. think that might be, um, that, that might really share this a little bit more. Um, so in the morning, I, uh, I start off my day with, um, with a glass of water and I try to have infused water in my fridge, which is super easy to make. You just put it in and just have it overnight, like have it just sit there overnight. And so one of my favorite waters to have is called spa water. I created it and it's water with cucumber and with, uh, a cucumber and with mint in it. Mm. And so cucumber actually decreases water retention because it has so much water in it that it's helping to flush out your body of sodium and other things that are unhealthy, um, which the water is also doing as you're drinking it. And, and then also there's the mint, which mint actually creates, um, the scent of mint helps you decrease overeating. And so even having a mint candle in your house gives you that effect as well. So in the morning I have this water, it's so, it's so beautiful. It has mint and cucumber, it's been infusing. I drink a whole glass of water, my whole body feels like just clean and, um, and flushed out. And then I have my coffee with cinnamon because I love having cinnamon. And, um, and cinnamon really is lowering my blood sugar right in the morning. So. We're, I'm doing that. And then after that, I have the eggs that I was talking about with, I put onions, which are really great for gut health. Mushrooms are really great for gut health. So I do onions and mushrooms and I put a little bit of jalapenos because I like that heat. And it, you're also getting benefits from, from spicier things as well, which is my metabolism is boosted and the, my appetite is going to be curved. Like I'm just going to eat what I need. 
And, um, and then I also add turmeric. So then I add eggs and I add turmeric into it. And so I'm getting those anti-inflammatory properties. So just right there, you know, by 8 a.m., I've been able to have um, water that is just like cleaning me out, decreasing water retention. I'm using that mint. Um, and then I'm using the, the, the cinnamon and then the turmeric and a little bit of the, the a little bit of chili peppers in there. And so it's an indulgent way to lose weight and it's, yeah. it's actually helping you, but you're focusing on the flavors instead of like, Oh, I have to eat less of this, or I have to eat this food that I don't really want to eat. You're focusing on what you're adding versus what you're taking out. And that's really important for our mental approach to getting healthier because it's more from a side of a, a way of abundance of thinking I can add more instead of taking away things. And that really helps in making this a sustainable lifestyle and making a healthier lifestyle sustainable for you. Wow. Uh, who wants to go to Nagina's for breakfast? I do. <laughs> <laughs> sounds delicious. I haven't eaten breakfast yet. I just had that cinnamon coffee. So I'm like, oh, that just sounds delicious. <laughs> and you have a great freebie that can get everybody started on this, like adding in more spices into their recipes. So uh, tell us what your freebie online. Yes, I'm so excited to share. Um, at my website, masalabody.com, I have a free recipe book. It's called Seven Spicy Recipes to Melt Away Your First Seven Pounds. And this includes seven of my best recipes from my programs. One of them is it called Thai Thinning Curry. Um, and it's like so easy to make. It's so super easy. It tastes so good. You're just going to want to eat it all the time. Another one I have is called a Smoked Paprika Detox Bowl. And I also have a chocolate dessert that's spiced in there as well. And so yeah. it's really a good way to get started is to just follow a recipe and to see how the spices are being mixed and how, what the quantities are. And then you can start to become free and add it into more things as you, you become more comfortable with it. So, um, that is my, uh, my complimentary free recipe book for your, um, for your listeners. And that's at masalabody.com. Awesome. Well, thank you so much. I think this, I think everybody listening is going to be putting in some spices into their holiday recipes now, thanks to you, which I think is great. Um, I'm personally going to go over and get the recipe ebook myself. So thank you so much, Nagina. I appreciate you coming on the show. Thank you for having me. This has been so fun, Karen.